Hey guys, it's Lee Labrada with Labrada Nutrition, makers of Lean Body Shakes. And we are here today again with world-renowned expert and nutritionist, Keith Klein. Keith, welcome. Thank you for having me, Lee. It's great to be back. You bet. And so uh, in our protein corner this week, we're going to be talking about protein assimilation. You know, how much can you assimilate based on the research that is currently out there? We're going to examine some of the scientific literature and, uh, and we're going to talk about also protein scheduling, like what are the best times of day to eat that? Keith, I've got a study here in front of me that uh, is, is called how much protein can the body use in a single meal? Uh, for muscle building, implications for daily protein distribution. And what that study talks about is that uh, traditionally, they've talked about young adults being able to synthesize pro, uh, the protein and build muscle tissue with as little as 20 to 25 grams of a high quality protein, which both you and I know is, is, not, is not true. Uh, and what the study uh, went on to uh, confirm was that in order to reach maximum protein synthesis, maximum muscle uh, and, and anabolic conditions in muscle that they needed to have a, a minimum of 1.6 grams per kilo per day. What are your which thoughts? Which is higher that? than the 20 to 25 grams, which has been normally yes. assumed. Yes, you, yes. Assume, right? yeah, so we're, really what they're talking about is at least, po at least 0.8 grams per pound of body weight per day. We're so getting let, close. Let's talk a little bit about that and what you did in your clinic. Yeah, well, look, um, first of all, you got to consider body weight, right? Because there's a difference between a female athlete and a male athlete and what they weigh. Uh, secondly, you have to consider was the study also, how many meals did they give? Because what, what we have seen over and over again is that the human body can only assimilate so many nutrients at one feeding. Uh, that's true of all nutrients, carbs, fats, vitamins, minerals, right? And what we found is that you can't make somebody bigger by cramming more and more nutrients in each feeding you can only make them bigger or more athletic or faster by adding more feedings of the appropriate values, right? Okay. So I like the idea that the study came back and said, look, they, they used to say 20 to 25 grams of protein is all the human body can assimilate at one time. We, we, we know that's not true because no. you and I ate more than that as bodybuilders. It, it, and, and one meal. Yeah. And we got leaner <laughs> while we got bigger as we prepared for our shows, right? Sure. Sure. So I think what you see is a lot of kitchen alchemy has been ahead of these studies for many years as yes. bodybuilders experiment with their food. Okay, that's that's so, right. So here's what, what I, I can tell you. Um, females, I believe, depending on their goals, can assimilate somewhere between 25 and 30 grams of protein per feeding. Per when feeding. They start, yeah. Per, when they start that's, to that's, get, that's a big difference than per day. That's per feeding. Per feeding, yeah. Now, what happens when somebody starts to eat too much at one time? is that you begin to create byproducts that actually don't help you gain muscle. So when you start to cram in too much protein at one time, more than your body can assimilate, uh, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna create ammonia, urea, uric acid. And remember that the body has what's called the amino acid pool, which is regulated by the liver, which is where it goes to construct and grab amino acids, which it requires. Uh, the completeness of the protein is very important as well, right? right. But look, a male, I can tell you for a fact, a male bodybuilder, somebody aspiring to build muscle in the male realm, I put a minimum of 40 grams per feeding. Okay. And the bigger they are, I move up from there. Right. Now, let me ask you this. As far as um, a, a, a person that's just interested in toning muscle and just getting in better shape, because we know that uh, bod bodybuilding is, is more of the extreme, especially competitive bodybuilding. Uh, but a person that's just wanting to get into better shape and to tone, you know, uh, maybe they're just starting on an exercise program and improving their diet. How many grams of protein for somebody like that? Well, still for a male, it's about 40. You know, so even if they're just average every day, which is about six or seven ounces of good protein, like chicken breast, turkey breast, right? Or white fish. Okay. And for the female, it's still, I, I, I never went lower on females, like runway mile and stuff. I never went lower than 20 grams of protein per feeding because what everybody wants is they want greater muscle density and tonality and protein mixed with the right kind and the right amount of carbohydrates is what creates that density. Okay. And, you know, keep in mind, I know that this is the protein corner, but you have to balance your protein with a complex carb to get the desired outcome in energy levels, feelings of well-being. So believe it or not, my average, and I worked with a lot of average individuals, my clinic just didn't work with superior athletes and Olympic uh, medal winners and stuff. 
but the average people, I had them eating very much like a lot of my athletic people. Okay. They just didn't maybe eat as many meals and they just maybe didn't eat just quite as much carbs. You know, okay. so I would tell you, a guy who wants to get in great shape, 40 grams of protein a day would fit the bill. Okay. 40 and grams of protein per meal, not and that. Is that 40, okay, so 40 grams of protein per meal, is that regardless of their uh, composition? So in other words, if I'm a if I'm a guy that's overweight, 240 pounds, I want to drop 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, should I be consuming 240 grams of protein per day or is it based on my lean mass? So long as you spread it out, right? So okay. if you ate 240 at one time, you're getting nothing. You're just getting right. fat because right. you consumed a nutrient, right? So you got to spread so it out. Even my obese patients would eat a good six ounce chicken breast at every meal, you know, okay. six to seven, right? Uh, okay. So many of us bodybuilders are doing that. And, you know, so to get bigger, they might go up to eight ounces, but average sure. people, 40 okay. grams per meal. Mm -hmm. 40 grams per meal. And that's what yeah. you can find in about six to uh, six, six ounces of, mm -hmm. of uh, chicken breast or uh, yeah, six ounces of fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to insert this. I'm, I'm going to plug our lean body shakes. They have 40 sure. grams of, of, of right. protein, uh, mm -hmm. with zero sugar. It's lean. And, uh, and, and the idea is to have a protein feeding every three hours. Keith, let's talk a little bit about scheduling protein. Right. Well, when you, I remember early on, I was at the Institute of Specialized Medicine and I did mainly clinical nutrition before I got into sports medicine. And I worked with an incredible group of doctors. And one of the things that I headed up was the diabetic ward of this institute. And interestingly enough, all of my bodybuilding, now keep in mind, this was back in the very early 1980, 1981, late 1979, all of what I did for bodybuilders and athletes stemmed from the basic meal pattern of diabetic nutrition. We saw that when diabetics ate smaller frequent meals, we were able to get many, especially the type two diabetics off. They were no longer diabetic when they had the right nutrient composition and they all were eating carbs, they were diabetics. We just didn't give them as much as we would give an athlete, right? But what we found was that small frequent meals in the diabetic patient resolved so many of their issues because diabetic, the diabetic condition is heavily managed by nutrition. And right. what I saw with all of these patients was they're all leaning up, getting toner, feeling better, having more energy. And so when I came into the sports medicine realm and as a bodybuilder myself, I discovered that when I went from, because in the very early days, Lee, I was one of those kids who was eating three meals a day thinking I'd get bigger. And I right. did. Right. And then one day I went to see a guy at a, a weight uh, store that sold weights. And he goes, you need to put a protein drink in the mid morning, the mid afternoon. And when I did that for the first time, I got results. And then what I did is I added, a, I moved one of the protein shakes down to the evening after dinner and put in another meal, lunch in the mid afternoon, I got even bigger. And okay. so what I discovered then, you know, on my own, on myself and with the diabetic patients was the, the more frequent we ate with the right balance, we could get leaner toner and stabilize blood sugars and reduce cholesterol. And it's interesting, the bodybuilding diet is good for a lot of things that ail other people. Just it, average people. It, it, it really is, Keith, and yeah. and and I and I know that it's very similar to the way that uh, diabetics eat for uh, the control of blood it sugar. Uh, you know, it has the added benefit that you you uh, keep a constant intake of nutrients that help to tone and build muscle. Now, Keith, uh, just to summarize for uh, for our, our viewers, so uh, if if um, if they want to improve uh, their protein intake through the day, the way they should schedule it is uh, protein intake as soon as they get up breakfast and then every three hours thereafter is that correct yeah the soonest i find that somebody can digest the fuel uh is two hours two and a half hours so uh, i never i found that if somebody ate too close the incoming food would uh, uh, disturb the digestion of the food that's in there and you get a greater transference to fat so i found that uh really uh two hours is the closest you can eat and i find it works very well if you're gonna have a meal and eat two hours later to use a shake because it's highly digestible and very assimilable, right? Uh, when it's solid meals, I like to do every three hours because I didn't like to feel weighted in my stomach, you know, and, and heavy there. But uh, the, the, the consensus has shown after years and years of working with obese patients and athletes that we can assimilate our fuel every three hours. Now, when I, when I tell somebody, and, and you and I both 
have been doing this for years. I mean, just years, you know, eating every three hours. But when I tell people that they have to eat six times per day, they look at me like, what are you nuts? I'm going to be eating all the time. But um, how, how, what is your response to, uh, to that? I'm sure you get that, uh, you know, whenever you, you're uh, working with a new client. Well, in the beginning, everybody is set in their ways and their patterns, right? And my job was always to make sure I could find a way that they could do it. Because at the end of the day, a program is only as good as your ability to follow it. And that's where the technology changed. And I know you know this better than anybody. Somewhere back in the 90s, when protein shakes went from, you know, liver tablets to uh, right. just stinky milk and egg protein. Oh, to, gosh, I remember much, that. That was oh, terrible. Yeah, to a much more balanced blend of proteins and carbs as meal replacements. Right. And I think a real easy pattern to do is to eat a quality breakfast with a good protein and complex carb a shake in the mid morning and whatever you eat for lunch, just eat it again in the mid afternoon. And then you have your dinner. Now, a lot of people actually do better on five meals than six. So okay. I'm not going to have the average person eating six. It's, it's redundant. It's, a, it's unnecessary. So, so uh, it, it, would almost, feel hungry. it would almost be like a, um, a sit down breakfast, lunch and dinner, and then like a, a mini meal or snack or yeah. a shake at mid morning and mid afternoon, right? Yeah, what's a mini meal? A mini meal is a sort of a balanced meal, but a quick one like Greek yogurt or low fat cottage cheese with a little bit of fruit or something like that is a mini meal. And so um, that's something that can be done very quickly and very easily. It doesn't okay. have to be difficult and hard, but I'll tell you what makes it hardly. This is what makes it almost impossible is people who don't cook and carry their food. Right. How are you gonna do this and eat out, right? Right, this because all if, if you wait until you're hungry to eat, you're gonna eat anything. Exactly. Or the vending machine is going to look good to you. So right. the reality is, is that what I had to really do was get people to learn the joy of cooking and carrying food. Because you see, when you carry your food, you have exactly what you're supposed to eat in the right proportions of the right type. And when you don't, you're at the mercy of whoever and whatever is available and out there, right? right. It's almost impossible to do that. Right. I'm not saying it's impossible, but sure. it's more difficult. And, and for those of us that don't like to cook or just, you know, just uh, can't cook for whatever reason, there's al always these uh, meal uh, prep, prep services, you know, a yeah. lot of uh, prepared food at grocery stores now. I mean, you can go in there, you can get, uh, you can get chicken breasts, uh, you know, vegetables, uh, complex carbohydrates. It's never been easier, right? I have to smile because I remember in our days, uh, bringing a cooler of food with wheels <laughs> scooting across the airport, all taped down. You know, you, Today, what do you mean? Uh, what yeah. do you mean? Back in the day, I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's easier today, as you say, because there are companies that actually are nationwide. You know, there's one company, uh, literally, that I have my clients who travel a lot that they pick up the phone and tell them exactly what they want, and that food arrives at their hotel on the day they arrive in a refrigerated case. That's incredible. What's, the name, what's, the, what's the name of that company? Uh, Icon Meals. Icon Meals, and they can, find it, they can find it online? Icon oh, Meals? Yeah, Icon Meals. They okay. cook, they weigh, they measure, they deliver to your hotel on the day you arrive in a refrigerated case. That's amazing. I'm, I might have to check that out myself. Hey, Keith, let me ask you this for, uh, for our viewers before we wrap up. Uh, uh, if somebody wants to uh, get in touch with you, if somebody wants to be coached by you, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the best way is Lean Body Coaching. That's our online program. That's and right. I think, you know what, if somebody wants to... And, and, full, out, and full disclosure, I'm, I'm involved in Lean Body Coaching. Yeah, yeah, we both are. And I, and, and I think it's an amazing thing because what I did was took what I did in the clinic for 40 years from which I retired and moved it all online. So you have one-on-one -on -one counseling with your own coach. You're just like, you're working with me and I've got, and you've got all those videos on there. And the other way, if somebody wants to say, well, what are these guys about? You know, what does this guy really believe in? Then they can watch the documentary um, um, Beyond uh, Weight Loss. Which and is an, on, it's an amazing documentary. I've, I've watched it two times myself. Yeah. I tell everybody about it. Uh, I, I what, should what, tell people I didn't produce it. Or, I'm just in it, you know? Right. So I'm just right. happened to have, get my information out. It was a wonderful experience to be able to do that. Your, 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 uh, your information is, is just amazing in the delivery. And boy, I'll tell you, it's eye-opening. Some of the things that you cover, you know, uh, about how the uh, government uh, allows food companies to manipulate uh, our food supply and, and the uh, deceptive labeling and things like that. And you guys can learn all about that. Uh, by watching the documentary. Keith, again, what's the name of the documentary? Beyond Weight Loss. Beyond yeah, Weight Loss. And, and they can find that. They, uh, where, the, where can they view that? You can watch it on Xfinity. They can watch it on Amazon Prime. It's free. 
Okay. My Super. favorite four letter words. Super. Keith, yeah. it's, it's such a pleasure. As, as always, uh, yeah. you're a wealth of information uh, on, on protein and, and, uh, uh, and any type of nutrition topic. So uh, really, really a pleasure. And uh, uh, we look forward to uh, doing more of these segments with you sure. in the future. I know that our, our viewers really appreciate them. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Bye, bye everybody. Thank you. I'm Lee Labrada with Labrada Nutrition. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you again, Keith. Thank you.